Welcome everybody. My name is Marlon de Boer. I'm working as a system engineer for the social web social networking site Hives. I was wondering before I start how many people really know the website Hives. Okay, quite a, quite a lot. That's a good thing. Okay, first I want to explain what Hives actually is from a technical point of view. Uh, so Hives is a social network, much like uh, MySpace or uh, Facebook. Uh, currently, we uh, uh, use three data centers all around uh, Amsterdam, all connected to the uh, MSX uh, Internet Exchange. Uh, our um, uh, department consists of uh, 12 full-timers at the moment. It's just for the system engineers. So we have other departments as well that do the front-end programming. Um, currently, we're doing about 25 terabytes daily external traffic. So not just the, in uh, just the external. Internally, we do a lot more. Uh, we have uh, about 200 million page views daily. That's quite a lot. And at peak moments, we do about 80 million uh, page views uh, to uh, be able to serve at that much page views we have about 2500 servers at the moment we, which all need managing and with 12 people that is a problem if you don't have a thing like Puppet installed so what is Puppet? Puppet actually is a system configuration framework you can describe uh, parts, or you describe uh, what you would like to do in manifest, in Puppet manifest. Actually, you could say, I want to have Apache started, or uh, I want to manage my ETC password file, or my host file. It's entirely written in Ruby. So, yeah, for some people that could be a problem, but yeah, you have to install Ruby to be able to use Puppet. It's created by Luke Keynes. He was entirely fed up with CF Engine and all the other tools because they lacked the ability to uh, use the abstraction layer because uh, you have to write everything for the, the specific environment you're in. You can't use it on BSD as well on Linux uh, easily. With Puppet, that's much more easily to do because it detects on which uh, Unix system you are and you can almost use the same code. Uh, much of the deeper info is available at Reductive Labs. I don't have the time to go into depth, so just want to show you uh, how Puppet works. It's uh, a client-server model. So you have a central server where all your Puppet code lives, which you write, and all the clients connect to it, and the server compiles your manifest, makes sure it's unique for your host, and then the, the client receives it, executes it, and makes sure it gets run properly. Uh, to ensure you're uh, speaking to the right server, some people are concerned about security, or perhaps want, even want to run Puppet over the public internet, uh, it's using SSL certificates, so that way you can make sure that you're connecting to the right host. Uh, this is an example of the SitePP file. This is actually in, where in Puppet you declare all your hosts, which you want to manage. Uh, in this example, I've called the host some node. Uh, normally, this will uh, reflect your DNS host name. Uh, you're allowed to use any kind of variables inside your uh, uh, node declaration. So this, in this example, I've used uh, the operating, Solaris, uh, operating system Solaris, and I want to manage uh, SSH on this specific host. So I'm importing the, the Puppet manifest for SSH. In the actual SSH manifest, you can see we're managing the SSHD config file. And here we, you can see the benefit from being more abstract. You can actually check on which operating system you are. So for 
Solaris, you can have a different path as you have for the default environment, which could be a Linux or BSD machine. Uh, in this example, I want the file to always be owned by root, the group root, I should have the, the mode 644. Uh, actually, when a user changes this on the system and Puppet runs again, you can set intervals at which time Puppet runs, it will correct your changes, so if somebody changed the file to uh, nobody, nobody, first time Puppet will run, it will change uh, back to root. So uh, it's also a tool to detect errors users made. Um, the last part is the, the service. You actually, uh, in this example, you're subscribing the file from above to the service SSHD. So if anything changes in the SSHD file, uh, Puppet will actually restart your SSHD daemon with the new settings. So you don't have to do that manually. Okay, some of the Puppet features, there are more, but for our environment, these are the most important ones. Uh, Puppet is able to run on every Unix uh, architecture that can compile Puppet, or uh, sorry, Ruby. So in theory, you could even run Puppet on your jailbreak iPhone. Uh, what really is handy in our environment is that we can use templates. This reduces the amount of files we have to control. So, uh, for example, if you have different locations and you want to have different firewalls or different uh, resolve entries, you can just uh, put in a, the variables like you saw in this IPP and the template can find out on which location you are. And yeah, with Ruby, you can even put in for loops or other things to automatically generate uh, the content of that file without having to have 20 files in a specific directory and include the right one. Other thing Puppet has is the factor library. Uh, factor uh, is a library that shows you, for example, the amount of cores a machine has, how much free memory, how much uh, interface that it has, and can show you uh, which IP addresses are on that interface. There are much more features, but mainly we, we use those to uh, yeah, spawn the right amount of Apache instances or uh, uh, generate a firewall for specific IP addresses. Um, Puppet also supports types and functions. If I go back one sheet, uh, a type is, in this example, will be uh, the file type and the service type. Uh, there are a lot of more. You can use the contact type, for example, or the exec type. The contact manage your uh, contact entries on every uh, Unix host that supports it. And functions, for example, we use a couple of custom functions that we wrote our own. We can ask uh, on any given time uh, which versions of, of software is running or uh, IP addresses uh, we can bind on specific interfaces and we wrote custom functions for that. The only problem with the functions are that they only get executed on the compile host, so um, that's the, the, main, the main server. If you want to use it on clients, you have to do something with types because the types are executed on the, the client side. Other feature we use from Puppet is the database backend support. Uh, all the facts that are available can be written into a database backend. Uh, we use MySQL for that, and that way we can uh, run out uh, uh, all kinds of statistics. We can see how, which servers are on which version of the kernel, or uh, use how many cores, how much memory is in it. So it's very quick to just get an overview if you have a large server park. Another thing Puppet supports is the external node definitions. If I go back to the site PP, if you have a really large number of hosts and you already have another system uh, for your asset management from your service, 
you can do, write an, uh, your own script to generate some of this content without having to uh, take the rest of the server part. Going the wrong way, sorry. Okay, I want to go to the point why we use Puppet at Hives. Uh, we started out with uh, the SSH4 loop, as most of the system engineers do. And we found out that doesn't scale, so we tried to figure out something for that and we came across Puppet. Uh, mainly what we do if we install a uh, service, we rip open the box, uh, press on F F12 to do a PXC install, and it boots our quick start the first time, sets the host name, and in Puppet, we uh, put in the right node definition, and Puppet will do the rest. So that way, we can be operational within seven minutes, for example, for our main web servers, our front-end servers. If we rip open the box, put it into a rack, push the F12 button, and we're up and running within seven minutes. So I think that, yeah, it's a pretty good time to get your server operational. What do we actually manage uh, with Puppet in our environment? Uh, like I said before, uh, some of the DNS entries or the resolve and the, the NTP servers, firewalls, are all location aware. If we had to do that by hand, it would be a hell of a job to keep up. Uh, we use Gen2 on our servers. That's, uh, and we don't want to compile all the the packages on their own house, so we have a centralized uh, package uh, system and Puppet can fetch packages from there and install if we, or update if needed. Um, Puppet also starts the required services, so for example if we have the main web class, it makes sure that Apache is started, the SSH is started and the monitoring services. Other group we use a lot is the database backend. And of course, that would start MySQL. Other thing we use it for is to push updates. That can be packages or uh, config files. If we do have to, have to roll out security update, we can use Puppet for that. And Pu Puppet will restart all our services to update the config. Um, other problem we came across when we used Puppet is that it doesn't scale well behind over uh, about 800 servers in the web brick configuration, which I think most people still use. Problem with the web brick is that it's single threaded, so even if you have more cores in your machine, you can't use them. So what we did, we used uh, the Mongo uh, Ruby implementation for HTTP and split off the SSL uh, part to uh, a SSL capable proxy. In our environment we use Nginx, but you can use Pound or Apache as well. This way you can load balance uh, some spawned instances of your mongrel, and that way you can use m multiple cores on one machine. Uh, if you get to the point that that doesn't scale on one machine anymore, you can, use, uh, you can build your own trusted SSL chain so uh, Puppet clients can connect to multiple uh, services instead of one. Other thing we do, we have passive clients. Normally, uh, the Puppet clients run in a defined interval and just connect to the server. But if you have a lot of servers, you will create your own natural uh, bus attack in your own network. So what we did, we push all, all the clients are passive and we push all the updates uh, serialized uh, throughout uh, our Puppet Master to keep the load l low. How we do that? You have a program that's called uh, Puppet Run. You can just, uh, we have a, a script around that that just in batches of 10 servers uh, calls the, the, the Puppet Run. The Puppet Run on the master will uh, connect to the client and say, you can run now, so then it will connect to your server. That way, yeah, you can easily reduce the load and don't have to think about the interval, the Puppet the clients will start. Okay, if there are any ask, uh, questions, you can ask them now. Um, you use the database backend. Um, I tend to use as well for, um, to use as a feed for monitoring tools like 
like uh, Medios, mm -hmm. uh, to configure other um, or, or uh, uh, to, to, to fill that form puppet with uh, some CGI scripts. Do you use it for that kind of purpose as well? Okay, the question was if we used the uh, DB backend to uh, uh, feed them to Nagios or any monitoring tool. Uh, no, we have uh, our own other database, which we actually started with uh, for assets uh, management, and we use that database to uh, yeah, create our Nagios configs, but we're planning to yeah, uh, merge them or do something else with it. Okay. Um, sorry, time's up. <laughs> if you want me, please come outside.